Hey guys, my name is Chris. Welcome to my channel. Tonight's video are my 10 out of 10 fragrances. That means there is nothing I would change about any of these fragrances or very, very little. I grabbed around 12 fragrances with a couple of honorable mentions and I will tell you why they didn't make the cut. As soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna turn around and film my masterpiece fragrance video. Now what might be interesting is that there's no overlap. You are either in the 10 out of the 10 or your masterpiece. And a lot of my choices might come as a surprise. There are fragrances in the masterpiece category that are not 10 out of 10, and it's usually because of poor longevity. And those that I'm showing for tonight's video, although perfect for their category, may not reach masterpiece level, or in my opinion, they just haven't been around long enough to qualify as a masterpiece. Some of these might come as a surprise and others are probably predictable if you have been watching me for a while. And with that, I'm just gonna get started. Now, I'm not gonna lie, getting together a group of fragrances that were a 10 out of 10 or essentially perfect was not easy. I'm gonna start with the easiest one. This was a no-brainer. This is a total 10 out of 10, fairly new in my collection, maybe not quite a year, and it is a tobacco-centered fragrance. And tobacco used to be a note I was not a fan of. But in my opinion, this fragrance does tobacco perfectly, and it is Triumph of Bacchus. This is a boozy, fruity, vanillic, amber tobacco fragrance. This is all about rum-soaked fruits. There's saffron in here for a little spiciness. The tobacco is present, but it is done so smoothly. It's smooth, it's vanillic. There's an ambery sweetness to it, and it has a little bit of patchouli in the background, probably to give it a little bit of longevity. Sandalwood in the base, oh my gosh, I love this. And a little bit of Tonka. This was a love at first sniff. This fragrance has great longevity. Two to four sprays will last you all day. This is a year round fragrance just by the way it's composed. I love it in the winter time, but it's absolutely something I would wear summertime, at night, maybe date night. Even though this is a tobacco centered fragrance, this is 100% Unisex, a lot of women shy away from tobacco because they think it's too masculine. Let me tell you, that is not the case here. Those fruits, the vanilla, the amber, gives it a nice, nice, gentle, fruity sweetness. And I think that's the key to making this or help make this a perfectly unisex fragrance. One of the easiest choices for tonight's video, Triumph of Bacchus. If you have been following me for a while, you know it is no secret I have been a big fan of Parfums de Marley, I think I like just about everything they have released. And the next one was the only Parfums de Marley that made the 10 out of 10 list. I don't think it's my very favorite, it's probably my second favorite, but my very favorite didn't make the list because it lacked just a little bit in longevity. But the one that did make the list is Delina Exclusive. You have seen me talk about this so many times. And the reason that this is the 10 out of 10 is because the original Delina, even though I think it is a masterpiece, hint, hint, there is a small portion of that fragrance that is not my favorite and I would change if I were to create the fragrance. And it is that rhubarb in the original that I find just a little too green and a little too bitter. So that greenness, that bitterness is not present in the exclusive. It has all the other components of the Delina DNA, the rose, lychee, peony. This has a little bit more going on most importantly for me, it has a lot of vanilla, and I think that's why it is a love for me. It's sweeter than the original. It has a little bit of oud, not too much, and it has a touch of incense. I think it's a very creative flanker of Delina, and I have said so many times, this is a monster. I spray this on my clothes because I wear this mostly in the winter. And by the way, it is almost April, and it's still winter here. It is literally freezing. I spray this on my clothes and I also spray this in my hair. And when I spray this in my hair, I can smell it 24 hours later. Another one that is a major compliment getter. It has a great scent bubble. It's a pleasing fragrance and it has a lot of vanilla that those around me tend to enjoy. So this was another one that was kind of a no brainer for my 10 out of 10 fragrances. And I wanted to make sure I didn't overlook some 10 out of 10 designer fragrances that I think need recognition. The next one I have shown so many times. It is no secret. It is one of my favorite designer fragrances of all time. And I think for what it is, it is a 10 out of 10. And that is my Mon Guerlain. This is the EDP Intense. The original would not have made this list because the performance of the original is lacking. And the reason why this is a 10 out of 10 for me is because for those of you who are not familiar with this fragrance, this is a lavender vanilla patchouli fragrance. The original had more lavender. 
I prefer this one because the lavender is toned down and the vanilla is amped up a bit. And that's the way I like this perfume. I think this is signature scent worthy. This is a great year round perfume. There is really no situation I wouldn't wear this in. I would wear this to work. This is date night. This is every day. Casual and dressed up. And the EDP Intense actually performs much better than the original. So a fantastic designer fragrance, a 10 out of 10 designer fragrance in my opinion, Mon Guerlain Intense, the EDP. I'm gonna cover two designer fragrances that are, in my opinion, 10 out of 10 cheaper fragrances. One you hear me talk about all the time. It is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And another I hardly ever talk about, but I think it is a perfect sheep fragrance. And for those of you who are not familiar, a sheep fragrance typically contains oak moss, a woody base, a floral, and a citrusy opening. And in my opinion, this next one is a perfect rose patchouli sheep fragrance, and it is Gris Dior by Christian Dior. This fragrance has turned a lot of my patchouli-hating friends into patchouli lovers. They were patchouli lovers and they didn't know it because in my opinion, the patchouli is done so perfectly. This is one of my happy fragrances. I think the original intent for this fragrance was something contemplative. It's Gris Dior or Gray Dior. I do not get that. I have never got that. I think I'm an outlier. This is a happy perfume to me. This is happy and effervescent and bright. It has a super fresh effervescent opening. There's a bergamot in the opening. The main flower in here is rose. So we have rose, patchouli, and then we have oak moss to tie everything together. I know I have gone on and on and on about this perfume, but this is a lifer for me. This is one of my most complimented perfumes. I have had people literally track me down by my sillage to ask me what I'm wearing. And I'm talking about people of all age groups. I cannot imagine having a perfume collection and my lovely Gris Dior not being in it and almost everyone I know that has tried it has adored it. So this is a 10 out of 10. I wouldn't change anything. And even though this isn't a monster as far as performance, if I really kind of coat myself and I'm talking 10 to 15 sprays, I can basically get all day with this one. So Gris Dior. So the next fragrance that is a 10 out of 10 sheep fragrance for me, this is like uber classy lady in a bottle. That doesn't mean men can't wear it, but when I smell this fragrance, I think of an established woman who runs a Fortune 500. This fragrance, I don't wear it that much because it screams two things. It screams cold weather and it screams boss lady or boss bee. And this is my eau de soie by Sicily. This is one of those fragrances that has like 10 million gajillion notes. I know it has oak moss. You can detect the oak moss. Lots of florals, some bright citruses up at the top. I know there's grapefruit. I know there's carnation. I know there's oak moss. There's probably cedar in here. Other than that, everything's pretty well blended. This is one of my more vintagey smelling fragrances and it's vintagey in a classy way. It's not vintagey like Ooh, that's so 50 years ago. It's It smells classy with a touch of vintage vibe. I happen to know what fragrance Anna Ventura from Vogue magazine, I know what fragrance she wears because I had a friend who worked at Vogue. But if I didn't know, I would absolutely choose this as her fragrance because that very serious boss B runner of a Fortune 500 company is the vibe I get from this perfume. I wore it once in the summertime. It was from a teenager who said I smelled really clean and fresh. Otherwise, this is a cold weather fragrance because I bought it in the cold weather and it is very strong. I remember when I was testing this fragrance, I put it on a blotter spray, brought it to my hotel room, and the next day I could smell the blotter from this perfume in another room. It is a monster. So for a, for a classy sheep fragrance, Eau de Soie is a 10 out of 10. Now I'm going to cover a couple of sandalwood perfumes. Perfumes I think that are 10 out of 10 fragrances. The first one should be no surprise. This was in my top 10 for life and it is a perfectly done sandalwood in my opinion. And is my beloved Milky Mus by Palomar de Parfum. This is a perfect 10 out of 10 for me because I think this is a perfect take on a sandalwood musk fragrance. The sandalwood in my opinion is the star. Oh, it smells so good. It is one of the most realistic woody fragrances I own. I have a ton of woody perfumes. 
This is so realistic. And I know this because I am an avid hiker. This is very shaved wood, very wood chippy. So it's a clean wood chip. This is not milky to me. I don't get any milk, but what I get is more of the creamy nature of the wood, a creamy sound of wood. So it's wood chip soaked in cream. And the creaminess almost certainly has a lot to do with the sandalwood because sandalwood by nature is a very creamy, smooth wood. These wood chips soaked in cream is also surrounded by an almost equal part of musk or like a botanical musk and bread. And it is absolutely beautiful in here. It's just could not get more pleasant to my nose. When I first got this fragrance like over two years ago, I would say the performance was moderate. I have no issues with it. In fact, I will wear it. I will go out for a hike. I'll be gone for hours and hours and hours. I'll be home in the same clothes that I went hiking with and someone from my family will walk by and say, it smells like the woods in here and it's my perfume. It's not like I'm, you know, rubbing tree sap on my clothes. It's from the fragrance. And if I ever spray this on something like a jacket and I go retrieve my jacket, Several days later, I absolutely can still smell this fragrance. So a perfectly done sandalwood, sandalwood musk. The next one is a very different sandalwood. It is almost a gourmand sandalwood and it is Santal Austral. This is a very sweet, almost gourmand take on a sandalwood. Very different than Milky Musk. So there's really no detectable musk in here. Again, we have that creamy, smooth sandalwood. There's iris in here. This has a little bit of tonka there's a resinous sweetness. And if memory serves, this has an almond milk in it. So all of those things coming together to create this sweet, smooth, creamy, slightly powdery, beautiful, almost gourmand sandalwood. It's sweet and delicious, but doesn't quite smell like something I would want to eat. Another one that's a beast mode, this lasts eight to 12 hours and miraculously is the one that Picky Pat loves. And if you do not know, Picky Pat is my spouse and he hates about 98% of all my fragrances. So when he likes a fragrance, it's near close to a miracle. Incense Suave was in my basket for this list. And at the last minute, I changed my mind because Incense Suave isn't a fragrance that I would want to wear year round. I think it's a almost a perfect gourmand incense, but it's just too heavy and sweet to wear in the summertime. And Santal Austral is a fragrance that I would definitely wear year round. And those are the reasons that made my 10 out of 10 list. Now I'm going to go to some Oud fragrances. Oud is a very tricky note for me. I do not like the animalic skanky barnyard oud. I don't like a screechy loud oud. I'm very, very picky with my ouds. And the next two I'm going to show are 10 out of 10 ouds in my opinion. The first one being Oud Satin Mood. This is a syrupy sweet rose vanilla violet oud perfume. When I first got it, I had a little bit of trouble with the opening. I thought the opening was just a little harsh. Maybe it needed to settle. I have no issues with the opening. It is just a beautiful, jammy, syrupy, vanillic rose fragrance, and it has this violet note. Violet tends to add a powdery facet, and it makes fragrances a little bit more sweet. I grow violets in my backyard, and they are just lovely to smell. And the oud in here is just perfect. It's present, but it's not too screechy, and it's certainly not barnyard or skanky. And it is so well blended with these other notes that accompany it. If you own Oud Satin Mood, or you have tried it, you know about the scent bubble. This is an utter bomb. This is a fragrance that I would never dream of spraying more than six times, literally. You, you would need a respirator to breathe. It is so strong and you would just kill other people around you. So I am very light on the trigger, like two to four sprays is what I normally do for Oud Scent and Mood, but a 10 out of 10 fragrance. And the next one might not be a surprise. I don't talk about it a lot, but I think it's definitely a 10 out of 10 Oud fragrance. It is by Inicio Parfums. This is Oud for Greatness. The Oud in here is just the way I like it. It's dry and smoky. There are some lovely spices that go perfectly with this. There is a very prominent saffron and there's a little bit of nutmeg. There's like lavender in the background. It's not overpowering and I get that more in the dry downs. The first thing I get is the smoky oud, saffron, a little bit of spices, and then the lavender comes out later. One that I don't reach for very often, but when I do wear this, this is one you hold your shoulders back and you walk around and you will get noticed. This fragrance means business. Another powerhouse, 10 to 12 hours, and I wouldn't change a thing 
about it for greatness. Next, I'm going with a fragrance category that is one of my favorites, and that is the category of vanilla. If you have been with me for a while, you know I love vanilla perfumes in basically all shapes and forms. So deciding what was a 10 out of 10 and a masterpiece was very difficult. So I have two vanilla fragrances and a vanilla amber that I will be showing. The next one should be no surprise. I have gone on and on about this perfume Ever since I had my channel, it's made basically every vanilla list I've ever done. And I will keep talking about it till the end of time because I think this is basically a perfectly composed vanilla. Is it my very favorite vanilla of all time? Well, it's hard to say because I love so many vanilla perfumes. It is absolutely in my top 10 of all time vanillas. It is one of the most universally appealing, best composed vanilla. It could have made my masterpiece vanilla, but for me, masterpieces have to be a little bit more established. And the vanilla that I'm talking about is The Architects Club by Arkees. Again, this has made just about every vanilla list I have ever done because I think it is so amazing. This vanilla comes so close to being a perfect vanilla because it has, because the vanilla is very natural but it's still very creamy and gourmand, but it doesn't slip into the overly gourmand category so that I think it's extremely universally appealing and it's very unisex. This is a unisex vanilla in my opinion. So the point of view of this fragrance for those of you who are not familiar is this fragrance is all about a bunch of architects who are who get together after work and they're in this very luxurious bar or a club. They are sitting at a table and the seats are covered in this plush velvet and the walls are made of this beautiful wood and they're sipping their martinis. So this is a vanilla with all those components in it. So again, the vanilla is natural, but it leans gourmand, it's very creamy. It's sweet, but not too sweet, but it's still very delicious. This is a delicious vanilla, but it has those martini notes. So there is juniper, there's a little bit of lemon, there are, there's a little bit of bitter orange or orange rind, and just a touch of angelica, just a touch. It's in the background, just to give it a little bit of greenness. The dry down is a little bit more woody, so that's where the wood comes in. It's a very velvety, plush fragrance. It's not over the top too sweet, but it's definitely a sweet vanilla. And I've said this again a million times, this vanilla is very similar to Eau Duel by Diptyque. So if you have one, you really don't need the other, even though I do find that there are a lot of differences, particularly when you wear them side by side. And I used to have Eau Duel and I decluttered it because I prefer the Architects Club. I just prefer this one better. Eau Duel is a very natural, like, vanilla extract, vanilla, and it has some spices. So there's like pepper, so it goes in a little bit darker direction. There's pepper, there's spices, there's a black tea. So it heads in that spicier dry, a little bit darker direction, where for me, this is a little bit brighter. It has that lemon, it's got that juniper, it's got a little bit of that angelica, and the vanilla is just a little bit more sweet and fluffy and velvety. So that's why I prefer the Architects Club. This is not a beast, but the performance is great. To make my list, you don't have to have beast performance, but you have to have decent performance. There are no poor performers in here. So this is a, I mean, this has a moderate scent bubble and the performance is moderate. I would say I could get at least six to eight hours particularly when I spray it on my clothes, which I do. This is definitely a year-round vanilla. It is absolutely 100% a year-round vanilla. It's unisex. And another one that Picky Pat, my very picky spouse, when I spray this, he said, what are you wearing? You smell really good. So again, that doesn't happen a lot. Absolutely, again, broken record with the Architects Club. In my opinion, a 10 out of 10 vanilla. The next one that I chose for my 10 out of 10 vanilla goes in a completely different direction. It is definitely a gourmand vanilla, but it has some naughty notes. It's got some animalic note. It has leather and it has castorium, which kept me from trying it for a long time. So of course I sampled it first, and when I sampled it, I was just kind of blown away. It is absolute aphrodisiac, but Anisio Parfums. Don't be afraid of the castorium. It just adds a little bit of, I don't know, funky deliciousness is the only way I can put it. There's a little bit of musk, so this is a sweet, musky, foody vanilla. And the leather is so smooth and soft and in the background. I just think it's really kind of blended with the vanilla. When I wear this, I have been told I smell like the following. Brownies, chocolate chip cookies, and cake pops. I personally think it smells like a, a hot brownie, a hot fudge brownie 
with vanilla ice cream on top that is melting. Naughty, delicious foodie vanilla that this is a 10 out of 10 performer at around hour six to 10. I feel like I can't smell it anymore, but those around do detect it because at the end of the day or when I'm finishing at work and I go somewhere else, wherever I go or the places I have been, people will say, oh my gosh, you smell so good. What are you wearing? So a 100% 10 out of 10 vanilla fragrance, absolute aphrodisiac. So the last one in the vanilla category, this is a vanilla amber perfume. I showed this last week in my part one of my amber series. This is 100% a 10 out of 10, one of my favorite ambery fragrances, my favorite homage, and this is material. This almost landed in the masterpiece basket. I put it in the 10 out of 10 basket because this is a 10 out of 10 ambery vanilla. I would change nothing about this. The vanilla in here, is gorgeous. It is sweet. It has a sweetness to it, but it's not overly foody. There are spices in here. There's a little bit of incense. It's an exotic vanilla. It's very resinous. There's a powderiness to it. It has a little bit of patchouli and a woody dry down. Another one, Monster Performer, will last you all day. A gorgeous, resinous, ambery vanilla that is absolutely stunning. Love this wouldn't change a thing about material, but I'm watched. Okay, I've got two more, and then I think I'm gonna do my runners up and call it a night. So another one that has a lot of vanilla in it, but I wouldn't categorize it as a vanilla. It's a floral vanilla, and it is Hibiscus Mahajan. So this basically is the most beautiful, hibiscus tea you've ever had brewed in your life at a splash of mint with a little bit of rose in the background and a ginormous dollop of vanilla ice cream. So this is a floral vanilla in my opinion. The rose is present, but it's soft and in the background. And I know a lot of people who hate rose as a note, but love this perfume. So rose does not take center stage. It is definitely in the background, but it is detectable and on the soft side but there's nothing soft about this fragrance. This is one of the strongest fragrances in my entire collection. I've worn this to work a couple times and my coworkers said they could smell me outside my office and down the hall. Like they smelled this way before they saw me. So major powerhouse. I literally would not change a thing about it. This is a beautifully composed floral vanilla or vanillic floral that is out of this world. And the last one I haven't talked about in a long time. I think I've only spoken about it a couple times, but it is a perfect fragrance. In my opinion, it is a perfectly done patchouli fragrance. It is a perfectly done resinous patchouli and it is Misfit, I love this so much. And when I bought it, I was unaware that this actually is an award winner fragrance. It won like best niche fragrance of 2021. And I understand why this fragrance is in a category of its own. I love patchouli, but I don't have anything that smells like this. There's a lot going on, but even though it is like front and center patchouli, you have to love patchouli to even hope to enjoy this but there's other beautiful notes that give it a lot of character. There are residuous notes, it gives it a little bit of sweetness. There are aromatics in here, so there's carrot seed, I wanna say. There's a little bit of lavender. There's a lot going on, but it is a beautiful, warm, resinous, strong patchouli that is definitely unisex. My spouse enjoys this also. It is year round, but I tend to wear this in the winter and like all of my other 10 out of 10 fragrances, performance is fabulous. So that'll be my last fragrance to make the list. And I have two runners up. I'm just going to run through them quickly and tell you why they didn't make my 10 out of 10. It's Herod by Parfums de Marly. This is a gorgeous cinnamon tobacco fragrance. I wouldn't change anything about how this fragrance smells. It smells similar to other perfume loves in my collection, namely Divine Vanille, which is another one I've talked about a million times. It smells a little bit like Ojan. It smells a little bit like um, Amber Nargile by Hermes. The, my only issue with this is performance. For whatever reason, it's just not a strong or even a moderate performer on me. Besides performance would be 10 out of 10. And the next one is an absolute 10 out of 10 gourmand. I've spoken about this one a million gajillion times, Deep in Desire Yacht by one of my favorite houses, EBK. This is a delicious gourmand that smells like the juiciest blueberry muffin you've ever smelled with like sprinkling of a little bit of chocolate dusting, a little bit of grapefruit rind, 
a little bit of wood, a little bit of nuts, and a little bit of tea, I wouldn't change a thing. And then performance on this is monster mode, just like almost all other EBKs. The reason why it didn't make 10 out of 10 is because the House of EBK is not very, it's not very accessible. It's not very easy for people to sample it. In fact, it's quite hard. The fragrances aren't sold in department stores. You have to order directly through EBK and they don't have a website. It's Facebook or Instagram. That being said, I've had zero problems purchasing any EBK. I had to blind buy my very first one, which was almost two years ago, which was a blind buy success. And then I got the discovery set and then I was able to try everything else out. But if it was a little bit more accessible, the House of EBK, this would absolutely be a 10 out of 10. Now, there is an EBK that is in my masterpiece video and you will see that in about a week. So that closes out my 10 out of 10 fragrances, fragrances which in my opinion are 10 out of 10. In other words, I wouldn't change a thing about them. In closing, I would love it if you guys had any 10 out of 10 fragrances, you would let us all know about it in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. I hope you had a good time. I hope your time with me was well spent and you enjoyed it. Thanks for supporting me and I will see you on the next one.